um, if I had a title for this talk, uh, other than the one Ruth gave me, God is love, it might be the fire of his love. I'm going to just read from Psalm 73, from verse 21 to the end, to start with. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterwards you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. Just before I go on, I just say, all of you, if you've made a confession of your faith in Christ, and not one of those who is going to be unfaithful to him, okay? So just to reassure you from the first, that nothing, no one can snatch you out of his hand. And if you haven't, then ooh. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's changed my life. I wouldn't go back if you gave me all the world and uh, everything I ever wanted in my whole, uh, you know, I would never go back. And I pray I'll be like my friend Raya, who when she was being strangled by her brother-in-law and her father, because she was a Muslim and had come to Christ, and they wanted her to deny him. She said, I will never deny my Jesus. Thankfully, she survived and, and she's amazing. But uh, I want to be that way too. Lavish. This is the word I want to start with. So you probably or you might be familiar with the translation in the New International Version, the NIV, of 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. How great is the love that he has, the Father has lavished upon us that we might be called children of God. Well, I don't know why, but I've never really quite liked that translation. I've just, it's never, like someone else spoke to me about that and it's that, that's such an amazing verse. And I was like, yeah okay i just didn't quite get it and i was thinking about this word lavish and why didn't that work for me um it's not in the original greek really it's very much just says that he's given us the love but why did the translators use this word well what does it mean i looked it up in the dictionary it's an adjective in this in in one sense although it's used in a, as a verb actually in in the in the scripture generous plentiful, luxuriant, and extravagant. And the verb, that's the noun, or the, sorry, the adjective, the verb is actually to give generously, to lavish upon someone. And that makes more sense to me, that God lavishes love. But what didn't make sense about that association I had with the word lavish, well, when I think of lavish, I think of a massive a ball, if you know what I mean by a ball, a very grand party that the colleges in our city have at the end of after their exams. Uh, the, the royal family have balls and, you know, that, that used to be more common in years gone by, right, with the finest things, you know, chandeliers hanging from the ceilings, a 10, maybe 15 course meal, you know, in some cases in royal situations. And, and that's what I sort of think of it. And I think, I don't know, that, that's a bit over the top for me, really, that really lavish, that's too much, isn't it? And it's like, I don't feel like, you know, I don't know. So I struggled with, is that, is that what it's all about? Is that what life's about? Is that what God wants to give us? How's his love like that? I didn't, I didn't quite get it. So I looked in the Greek and I, I, I found really, if you look word by word, this is what it says, or to the best way I can convey it. See ye, that's where it starts actually. And some translations, the King James will say, Behold, 
I like see ye. In one, it says, be ye perceiving. And ye, that's just plural for you, right? We just don't use that anymore, but we don't have a word for that. So that's why I'm still using it. See ye, all of you, what manner of love. That's what it says in the Greek, basically. What manner of love the Father has given to us. To us, yeah? In, and this is the key word. This is an amazing word. The next word, see ye what manner of love the Father has given to us in order that. Now, that is sometimes just translated that. You can or so that. But in order that we may be called children of God. That is what he wants for us. That, so why did he do everything he's done on the cross for us? Well, for many reasons, and that's, I haven't got time to get into it, but, but a key one is so that we may be called children of God. And I don't know how much you've thought about what that really means, you know, to be called a child of God. That is amazing. If you, the more you ponder on it, ponder on it. You are his child. You are his son or his daughter. There's only those two options, by the way. And uh, he loves you. He loves you so much. And, and, and what I realized that I struggled with this word lavish is these connotations that we have with the word that it's sort of luxur the luxuriant side of things. And I thought, no, that's not the sort of love God has given us. Well, that's what I feel anyway. He does want to bless us. And he, I could tell you stories of how he's blessed us as a family with, you could almost say lavish thing. I mean, amazing holidays when we've had no money at all. And how has that happened? Definitely God. Okay, I can tell you several stories of that sort of thing, including our honeymoon and two holidays to Bermuda. And I didn't, we didn't pay for any of it. Amazing, right? And that was the love of God, the holidays in Bermuda from one of my best, well, basically my best friend. And I was so moved, actually, that he paid for all of us to fly out there. Yes, because it's amazing to have a holiday in Bermuda, but because he wanted to spend time with us. And I knew that's why. Wow, that, that showed me the love of God. Me and my friend Rick. But um, the love, Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit, showed us on the cross this is the way i thought of it in in one aspect is bloody okay it's not it's not a nice ball that you go to in a tuxedo in a dinner jacket or a, a beautiful white dress or a beautiful red dress right it's bloody the you know it's violent it's very it's raw those are the sort of words i was thinking about as i thought about jesus on the cross and it says, in, in, like I was saying, it says, be ye perceiving. It's almost an, it's an imperative, that word. It's a command. See ye. Open your eyes and see what God has done for you. What he, how much he cares about you. Is there any way, he could have chosen any way he wanted to, to demonstrate his love for us, right? He chose incarnationally bringing Jesus on earth as a man God as a man living his whole life and actually just I don't want to go on too long but his life is very key to how much Jesus loved us as well we focus on his death but his life can you imagine how hard it was for Jesus yes he's God but he's also man with all of the temptations and struggles that each one of us struggle with right and he did not succumb to temptation once. I don't think that was easy for him. If you do, I think you need to have a chat with some, maybe one of our elders or something, because I do not think that was easy for him. Okay? And, and that's a big topic. I'm not going to get into that. But he loves us. And he lived a perfect life that I believe was extremely sacrificial, very difficult. He didn't have anywhere to lay his head a lot of the time. He didn't have a home. He didn't know where his next meal was coming from half the time. 
he trusted God, yes, but he was living as a man so that we could see it's possible to live to some extent in the way that he did. And he loves us. And so he lived this life so that he could be a perfect sacrifice because that's what we needed for our sins to be purged, to be atoned for, to be expiated or, you know, there's all these different words, but to be dealt with, right? He needed to deal with this stuff. And I don't know about you, but before I was a Christian, I was trying to deal with my stuff, my bad, all the issues I knew I didn't like about myself by myself, by trying to be a better person, by lit not literally beating myself up, but mentally talking to myself at times and saying, I must not do that sort of thing again. I must not do that. So sort of, I've really hurt that person. I really, that was rubbish, Felix. Don't do that. That has anyone else tried that? I tell you what, it does not work. <laughs> Even if you do that in your mind, it doesn't work. Only the Lord can change you, okay? And he can, but come to him. And, and this love that he's given us, actually, I wrote out some words, and this is my version of screen sharing, so uh, it's kind of pretty <laughs> high technology. These are some words, you know, I felt about Jesus' love. Yeah, can you read those? Okay. Yeah. Enough. It is enough for you. And put your name in when I say you. Okay, Tony. It's enough for you, for Matthew, for for Becky, for Claudius. If you're there, yeah, I can see Claudius everybody right it is enough it's not just enough for i don't know whoever you think is the like the best person in our church right there isn't one by the way only jesus he's part of our church thank you lord he's the head of the church generous his love is incredibly generous yeah he gave everything he was willing to give his life you can't give more than that can we if we wanted to give something to anyone else ultimately what do we do every november you know we still do it a hundred years later over a hundred years we still commemorate what they did can anyone give anything more than their life for others plentiful it is plentiful and he you always are going to get what you need you you're always going to have what you need from god and I tell you, quite a lot of the time, you're going to have a lot more than what you need. Yeah, the blessings for obedience, being obedient to God and following him and confessing him as Lord are massive. They're huge. There are some pretty tough times as well. But you'll have, definitely have what you need, always. And extravagant, extravagant. I wrote this out a few times. I just couldn't get it right. So I've got a lot of, a lot of extravagance. It's a, it's a long word. It just... Kind of wouldn't fit in this. there's a lot of extravagance i even added another page to sort of make it look better a lot of ex it is extravagant and it is extravagant his love so yeah that holiday to bermuda that was a, and our honeymoon goodness me that was extravagant i tell you that story sometime if you want but i'm pretty much wrapping up um what else do i want to share the fire of his love the boys made this it was a little present that uh, it meant a girl with a Lego teddy, you know, but somehow the fire got on it. And I thought, hmm, I don't know. Maybe that actually speaks to somebody here. It's a present. There's a f I don't know. Maybe that's a word. But I just thought the fire of his love. And the other thing is, I felt God saying, and perhaps to share this, this is a lighter here. I've got a lighter. I don't know if you can see. You can see the flame. Well, I can't see the flame either because it's not really working. And there's just like hardly any lighter fluid in there. So it's not lighting. Now, if you feel like that, okay, whether it's respect to the fire of love that is in you for others or for God, if you feel like that, then do you know the answer? to get the flame of love. I've got matches here. Now these work really easily. My kids were really enjoying lighting these. They kind of go out again, but I have got candles here. But this fire, it's okay. There's no smoke alarm in this room. 
but I'm going to light this candle. And and look, it's really easy to, to get it back, guys. And uh, if your fire has gone out, if you feel like it has, one of the things you need to do is if you want to be a burning coal, where does a burning coal need to be in order to keep glowing red hot? leave you with that i'll give you the answer with other glowing coals spend time with people even over i don't know it's difficult in these days but you can spend time with people you can chat on the doorstep with someone if you need to if that's what it takes to spend the time you need to with i don't know whoever is in your life who you know is a glowing coal and do and lord yeah i'm just going to pray to finish father thank you for the fire fire imagine a real fire it's not a little candle like this the fire of god's love it's a raging fire but it is under control he's a he's a god he has the fruit of self-control yeah he's he gets angry sometimes but he he's a god he's he's under the self you know but thank you for the fire of your love god and i just pray right now i pray for those here today who don't feel it, who have, have loved, and maybe they have felt it, or maybe they haven't ever. Whatever your situation, I pray right now that the fire of your love would come upon every single person here today, and even those who are not within our church and everyone else. You want to bless people with knowing that love, that love that's talked about in the Song of Songs, that is extravagant, that many waters cannot quench. Many waters cannot quench love. And I thank you for that love that it says also in the Song of Songs, someone would give, they'd give up his whole, he'd give everything for. And I think that's available to us. So I pray for us all, and I pray for anybody here who has not accepted Jesus as their Savior or their Lord, they might have a if they feel like that is what they want to do but they just can't for some reason they lord give them the courage show them give them a sign show them yes i love you i'm waiting for you encourage them to do that so that they know it's not it's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing it is the best thing i've ever done and i think just about it, most people here will tell you the same if, if you're in that place I bless you all in the name of Jesus. Amen.